welcome to my channel. Please subscribe, please subscribe, please subscribe, and hit like. So I was working on this movement, which is a tutor, and the hairspring was totally screwed up, and I managed to straighten the hairspring out, but what I didn't do was I didn't um, put the right curve on it, and that would have caused a problem. And I was recommended by a gentleman named Mark, I believe, from Australia to go watch Alex's video. So let me just give a shout out to Alex for a second. So Alex runs a website called, or a channel called Watch Repair Tutorials. Watch Repair Tutorials. And in particular, I was watching this this, this tutorial, this behavior, that's all folks. This tutorial saying adjusting uh, Ecatron, ETA, Etron, ETA, Ecatron regulator, E-T-A-C-H-R-O-N, E-T-A, Tron, Etron regulator, a beginner's guide. So this, this was a great tutorial, um, and it showed me that I actually had to reestablish that curve, as you can see in this photo here. The curve isn't absolutely perfect, but it's the best I could do with this particular watch. I did ride the regulator up and down the hairspring to make sure it was fitting or was riding without moving the hairspring. Um, I also, uh, it's centered right now, so the, the actual regulator pins are centered and I likely have to twist that, as you can see it now, I would have to twist it uh, counterclockwise just a, a bit. I did, I did twist the, um, I did twist the uh, hairspring stud uh, to make sure that the hairspring was centered within the uh, within the uh, regulator pin, so that was a necessity. Alex said you got to do that. You got to do that. One thing I didn't do, Alex, in case you're watching this, is I did put the stud in before I've put the uh, the actual movement in there. So I used your technique using the back of my tweezers. I anchored the the, the movement and I just pushed the stud in. So that worked quite well without uh, interfering with any bending or anything. Also, the hairspring was up a bit, so I had to grab tweezers and press that down a bit into the into the uh, regulator pins. That was a bit tricky. Um, this is a really small uh, ladies' uh, watch, ladies' movement. I'll show it to you in a second, but it's super small. So Alex, um, basically, he's he's a pretty cool dude, and he's got watch repair tutorials. It's probably the best professional prepare. Uh, professional tutorials out there on YouTube. The guy's a genius. Um, I've learned a lot from him. Um, I do mainly pocket watches and I'm not too bad at that. When you get into watches it gets a little more complex I think in some situations. Um, and I'm working on this tutor right now trying to get this thing up and running um, and keeping this as safe as I could keep it. I just put a video on yesterday where I where I fixed all the bends in this hairspring. You can still see a slight kink in the hairspring. Uh, I'll just point with my tweezers because this is an active video right now. So right there you can see a slight kink in the hairspring, but I can't, I don't know how the heck to get rid of that. It's very small. Um, and also right at the base of the stud, there's a little tiny bit of a bend there. Uh, I'm afraid of moving that or touching that because I could snap the hairspring and I don't want to do this because it's very hard to source a Tudor hairspring very hard to source it so getting in closer here anyway um, I'm using my uh, stare my microscope here now my digital microscope that I just procured yesterday so you can see some close-ups so thanks a lot Alex for actually um, basically telling me what I should be doing here uh, it was a brilliant brilliant uh, video I watched it thoroughly and uh, I just enjoyed the hell out of it so now Marcel L. Mar Mar Su Mar Surreal Mar M E R C U R I A L. I told you I was an engineer, right? So pronouncing these words, when I was a little kid, they had the boys against one wall and the girls against the other wall, and they said, "Okay, spelling B." They said, "You, J D, first word, maybe." I looked at him with all the confidence of a grade second kid, and said. M-A-B-Y. And they said, sit down. <laughs> Ever since that, I couldn't spell, and because my lack of spelling caused me to go into electrical engineering. So I went, dealt with numbers, 
uh, math versus English. Um, I can speak the language, but occasionally I'll I'll do a yabba dabba do and impersonate Porky Pig. That's all, folks. That's my Porky. Or or Elmer Fudd. Uh, oh, oh, uh, there's my Elmer Fudd. I once sang Stairway to Heaven on stage using Elmer Fudd's voice. It was it was hilarious. There was an audience that made me go up and do this, so I did it with Elmer Fudd. So I do a little bit of a... I do some impressions, as you know. So anyway, so Marsurial, I think his name is Mark, actually, but from Australia, wrote me quite a dissertation about dealing with this hairspring um, and did a brilliant job on that dissertation. I read it from head to toe. Then I went over to Mark's... Uh, Mark's uh, video and I left him a comment and he commented back so he's kind of wondering who my all-time favorite guitarist is damn that's so difficult well the best natural guitarist out there was Stevie Ray Vaughan so there's no doubt in my mind that SRV was the best the best natural guitarist out there I think that uh, one of the best guitarists out there back in the day um, was uh, Joe Satriani from a shredder perspective. Joe's quite the player. I got to got to see Stevie Vai live in concert around eight months ago up here in Ottawa. It was incredible. So Stevie Vai is amazing, but Joe Satriani taught Stevie how to play. From a feel perspective, you got to watch BB King in the old days. So you can take one note and then work that note. And you wouldn't believe the feel in that thing. I love playing The Thrill Is Gone on my Strat. Um, so that's one of my favorite guitar players as well from a feel perspective. And then from a speed perspective, the guy Al Demiola was always my best from way back. The guy could play like crazy. Um, and there's so many other guitarists out there, professional guitarists that are ex like, like uh, Tommy Emanuel is just incredible. So I saw him in concert once as well, and he plays what my dad used to call a box guitar. So <laughs> I'm not sure why he called it a box guitar, by the way. But but that's uh, Tommy Emanuel is just amazing. He does the guitar boogie, and it's just phenomenal. Go YouTube that. And then who else? I think that's pretty much it, except i got to mention Eddie Van Halen. So Eddie Van Halen, I saw him live up here in Ottawa years ago before he passed away. And he ranks among the, the best ever rock guitarist. Anybody who can play with a drill is amazing. Uh, but he plays um, a rock style, invented, I believe he invented tapping on guitar. If he didn't, he was the first one that actually used it effectively. And he's just a natural guitar player, just plays like crazy and a really good musician. So if you talk about the theory of music, uh, Eddie Van Halen and his brother used to win piano competitions. So they used to go in piano competitions. So Eddie's a, a real accomplished musician. He knows his theory. He knows everything. And he plays like the wind. So so I'd say Eddie and Stevie were kind of the best from a natural perspective. B.B. King from a field perspective. Uh, there's a lot of the good ones out there. Uh, I don't want to I don't want to steal the thunder in all of them, but but uh, Buddy Guy, for an entertainment perspective, and my father's always said, it's not how well you play, it's how well you entertain. So you got to get kind of into your groove and you entertain. Um, this summer, I'm going to be doing a lecture on close-up magic. Um, that's one of my other hobbies, other than guitar. Um, and I'm going to get a lecture on, and the lecture is not going to be on how to do all these these. Uh, particular moves or anything like that. It's going to be more about how do I entertain these people? So, and way back in the day, I was in Torino, Italy, and I saw these three ladies at a table, and I showed up with a ring, uh, a string, uh, I had no cards on me, just a ring and a string and a coin. And I entertained them for half an hour, and every time I did a, a routine or something, they clapped, and I was picking on I was picking on the one who didn't speak English, so the one who spoke English would, would get back to me and say some funny stuff, and then I'd, I'd, I'd be making other funny things and stuff like that. So it was really it was entertaining, even though it was a mix of magic tricks within the entertaining. So they didn't want me to go, but I you got to know when you've given them 40 or 50%, you got to leave. 
thank them very much and just get out of their space because they're not there obviously to see you bother them at their table so so I'm gonna teach a bit of that and I've done magic for years and years my techniques okay my tricks are are pretty good I only do the ones I know uh, work well um, and are fairly surprising to the audience um, so I'm doing that this summer on the 13th of uh, of July in Toronto so and that's at the Browser's Den of Magic, the Browser's Bash. Go look that up. Google Browser's Bash. Bash, Browser's Bash. Look that up. And then if you look at the marquee, you'll see a guy called Mr. Tricky Fingers. That's about, that's after all the pros, they get to me next. And I'm Mr. Tricky Fingers. You'll maybe recognize me with a fedora on. So anyway, a little bit of shout outs there and everything. So back to this uh, job here. Big thanks to Alex uh, for teaching me today exactly how to do this um, I don't think the bend on my on my hairspring is absolutely perfect uh, but I really it's it's it, it's probably a good enough curve and it it basically covers the full uh, length of that hairspring going from here and going down to about here that's as far as this regulator pin will go the regulator will go around right right down to about right here, I don't want to touch anything here, but the regulator will go down to about there, um, and the hairspring is kind of riding perfectly right to there. So I think I'm I think I'm safe. So I'm gonna put this back in the watch, wind it, and see if I get some action. It'd be really a really good thing if this thing will work. So I've chatted way too much this morning, so I'll call this morning chat. Uh, shout out to Alex, and let's uh, talk about some guitar stuff. So thanks a lot, and I'll catch you later. Bye.